Hello there, I would like to walk you through Neotype, my new types plus refine types library for Scala 3. If you don't know what those words mean, don't worry because it'll become self-evident as we look at some very simple examples. Come with me down here so we can have simple new type definitions. What are these? What are these good for? Well, this is how they're defined in Neotype. You have an object that extends new type and you have the underlying type ascribed here. So a name is nothing more than a string internally, but externally they're different types. Therefore, if we have this method called announce, which accepts a name and a favorite food, then I can't just pass in a name as a string here. It has to be wrapped in name. This will allow us to not accidentally transpose these two parameters. So name is not the same as favorite food, even though underneath they are both strings. And there are two different constructors here. We have new type and subtype. If we have a new type, that means that no one knows that name is a string. It's our little secret. However, if you use subtype, well, favorite food is a subtype of string, so you can widen a favorite food to a string. Of course, it doesn't go the other way, so when we require a favorite food here, that string is no longer a favorite food. If you would like to access the underlying value, you can always call unwrap, which will pull out that underlying type. So that's the basics of just these simple new type definitions. It's basically a version of opaque types with more batteries included. You get constructors, you get the ability to unwrap, and you also get automatic derivation. So here we have a person which is composed of a name and a favorite food, and it derives a JSON codec. I'm going to construct a person with a name and a favorite food, Dracula, blood, obviously, and then both convert that person to JSON and then read that person from JSON. And if I run this example, we'll see that indeed it JSONifies it expectedly. And this is quite painful to do with opaque types. You have to define those givens yourself. It doesn't just automatically work. But with Neotype, there are various integration libraries, one for ZeoJSON here, also for Circe, for JSONiter, for Tapir. If I'm missing any and you'd like some integrations, please let me know. So those are the basics of just new types. But the really exciting stuff comes when you have validated new type definitions. So here, it's the same as before, except new type now overrides the validate method. And this is taking the input, that underlying type, and returning a Boolean. So the power level must be over 9,000. For a palindrome, the input must be equivalent to the reversing of that input. So let's look at an example here. We can construct over 9,000 with 9,001, and we can construct palindrome with race car. However, what if I uncomment this line? Power level was called with an invalid int, 9,000, and input is not greater than 9,000. So we get compile time validation here. Similarly, with our palindrome. Tony Antonioni is not a palindrome, despite being fun to say. So here we get this compile time validation. And it's using the method that you wrote in simple, plain old Scala expressions. You don't have to use any crazy type level DSL, which many other libraries use. So I'm going to comment that out, and we'll continue to example four. So what if we're dealing with values that are not known at compile time? Previously, they were int literals and string literals, and that's what allowed us to do this compile time validation. But if we're reading this user input from standard input, What'll happen if we try to construct a palindrome with that? Well, we get a helpful error message saying palindrome apply requires a compile time known string and it could not parse the identifier user input. Of course, it doesn't know if this is going to be a palindrome or not. So it gives some tips. You can pass a literal string. That's not gonna make sense in this case. You can also call the make method, which will return a runtime validated either instead of returning this compile time validated version. And so we'll get back either a string or a palindrome. I'm going to print this out user palindrome, and let's run this example. So if I say race car, indeed, it is a palindrome. But if I say Bobby Yabby, ah, not a palindrome. So this validation method works both at compile time and runtime. And of course, it works with the derivation. So here I have a JSON combination of power level and palindrome, and I'm going to parse this combination JSON, and we should see that it indeed compiles because these are both valid. But what if I had an invalid power level? Let's run this. It's going to say power level validation failed. Similarly, if I have an invalid palindrome race cars, the palindrome will have failed. So that same validate method works everywhere. And if you want to dial up the fanciness even further, you can have custom failure messages. So here we have a pangram new type, and a pangram is a sentence that contains each letter in the alphabet at least once. So in order to validate this, we're going to see which letters of the alphabet are missing. And then if it's empty, we're going to return true. But if it's not empty, that means we're missing some letters and we're going to return a string. And this of course works because in Scala 3, you can have union types. So validate can return either a Boolean, 
for simple cases, or a string, and that string will represent your error message. So here we have two examples. We have a good pangram, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, but then we also have Joaquin Phoenix trigeminal neuralgia buzzfeed, and that is in fact not a pangram. Pangram is called with an invalid string, missing letters, S, V, P, C, W, etc. So if I say S, V, P, C, W, K, J, leave off only Y, it shows that. And if I add Svbkwichigiji, it indeed compiles, which is pretty great. And of course, once again, that works with derivation. So this succeeds, but if I copy over my fun false pangram, it fails with the error message that we have supplied. So yeah, uh, pretty cool. I'm quite excited about that. Uh, one nice thing that I didn't show off before is, of course, because these simple new types do not have validation, you can actually work with runtime values. So if this did indeed come from user input, that's not going to be an error message. But the second I come here and I add a validate, we're going to get that helpful error message. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. I think the ergonomics are pretty great. Hopefully you have fun. Goodbye.